Hello! In this tutorial, we'll have a closer look at the Dialog Edit plugins available in Adaptive Vision Studio. These plugins exist for a certain type of data and are open with a button in the Filters Properties window. To show how they work, I need to create some sample program. I have added a Scan Stripes filter, for which we need to define a scanning path. When some images are available in the program, you can use them as a background upon which you define a geometrical data. Here we'll use the loaded image. On the left side of the window there are buttons for changing the current behavior of the cursor. The lower buttons are unique for each data type. In our case, they allow us to create various types of paths. You can use them to create an open or a closed polygonal path, or a path in a shape of rectangle, a circle, or a segment. I'll use the last one here. Pressing a control button makes it easier to define both vertical and horizontal segments. Other available buttons are the same for every editor, and they are quite self-explanatory. We can use them to zoom in and move the image. Every plugin also has the option to undo changes and to clear the window from the defined data. In the top right corner you can select coordinate system in which you want to work. Currently we don't have any additional, so we are going to use the default one. In the situation where we would decide to use some other one, it would be important to connect the same coordinate system to the in-scan path alignment input of the scan stripes filter. That way we would ensure that scanning path would appear in the same relative position to the object. As we can see, we are able to find a stripe for the defined scanning path. Let's see how we can define another data type in a dialog plugin. This time our goal is to fit a circle to the edges. Defining a circle fitting field is a two-step action. First you define the circle radius. After this is set you need to release the left mouse button and you will be able to select the width of the fitting field. If the position or the size of the fitting field is incorrect, you can change it any time later. After running the program, we can see that we have successfully fitted the circle to the edges in the image. Now let's define a region. To do this, I will use the inROI input of the Threshold to Region filter. This input is very common and we can use it to restrict area of image used by filter. As you can see, we have different set of tools here. In addition to creating region as a different geometrical figures, you can also use brush for that purpose. If you want to remove something, simply switch to the eraser. You can select a size for both of these tools. Another interesting thing you can do here is to switch to the eraser mode. Every region you select with it will be removed from the output. For each of those modes, you can create region in various ways. For example, you can make them rectangular elliptical or polygonal, or you can draw them manually. For this last option, simply draw any shape you want, and release the mouse button if you wish to finish creating the region. In the case of polygonal region, just click on the places where you want to have your corners, and use double click if you wish to end its creation.
In our case, I will create a simple rectangular region. Now let's see the results of using this filter with a decreased ROI. As you can see, we have only thresholded the part of the image that was interesting for us. All editors are slightly different, but they all are very easy to use.